Happy Fourth of July. Probably not what you would call a typical Fourth of July, considering how the uh, what should I say recent <laughs> events have impacted our lives. Almost to the point the words freedom and liberty seem a little hazy these days, don't you think? Country's very, very divided. Nobody disagrees on that. Might be the only thing we agree on at this point. It's protest and violence in many cities, most states. Not the best time for our nation. But all that is more than a minor inconvenience because the division will destroy us if something isn't done about it. Lincoln said at Gettysburg, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And here we are, firmly divided against ourselves. And because of that, I thought the events going on today and the events at Gettysburg and the Gettysburg Address would be a fitting reminder of this Independence Day. If we're still calling it that, it seems that so much has changed recently. I don't know how many people realize how bloody the Civil War was. 10,000 men died at Gettysburg, the bloodiest battle of the Civil War. On June 1st, 1865, Senator Charles Sumner referred to this famous speech given by Abraham Lincoln when he spoke at his eulogy called the Gettysburg Address a monumental act. He said Lincoln was mistaken that the world will little note will we'll remember what we say here. Instead, he said, the world noted at once what he said and will never cease to remember it. The battle itself was less important than the speech. Is that really true? Have people remembered the Gettysburg Address? I'm not so sure. That's part of why I want to share it here today. Listen to this, by the way. If you think political chaos is a new phenomena, Sumner was a firm anti-slavery Republican, so anti-slavery, in fact, that he was physically attacked and nearly killed on the Senate floor by a pro-slavery Democrat. Isn't that interesting? Here's what Lincoln said at Gettysburg, and I hope that by sharing this here today, it'll only serve to memorialize it at least a little bit further. He said, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fittingly and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or subtract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they fought for here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. To that end I remain. Happy Fourth of July.